All right, welcome to a video. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I've just been kind of falling off the bandwagon. I had a problem where I ate some uh, food that didn't sit right for so for like a good uh, few days. Um, I was just basically out, like unable to to really um, do anything productive. So the good news is I'm I'm feeling better. I'm not all the way there, but I'm definitely on my way. Um, the other big problem I've been having, uh, specifically relating to this test, is uh, motivation. Um, just because, you know, it's coronavirus world B, and I've been ignoring it for a long time. I've been, you know, not changing my plans. I've been thinking, oh, yeah, I'm just going to go about my life as normal. But I haven't, uh, <laughs> I haven't uh, been able to, you know, well, the, the, so I guess what I'm just trying to say is that life is not normal. So for me to go and, you know, do something that I would normally be doing uh, just doesn't feel right. It, it's, it's like, oh, yeah, I'm practicing to take this test, but am I going to be able to take it? I don't even work at an ISP anymore. I, I decided to, to kind of shift gears to have more um, more uh, to have remote work be something that was more prioritized by my employer. So it, it's it's not even a test that really aligns with my current career uh, director uh, trajectory. And yeah, if, if things are better or if I want to go back to an ISP, then yeah, um, it's going to be important to have this um, certification. But uh, I mean, I'm more interested in, in DevOps programming, that's kind of where there's more demand and that's kind of where there's more uh, interesting work that I want to be involved in. So why am I not doing Python challenges? Why am I not reading through the two uh, DevOps network programmability Kindle books that I have? Um, why am I not making those kinds of videos instead of this kind of video? So you can see it is pretty difficult for me to kind of justify the time I spend on this. And um, it just all came crashing down once I, I kind of started feeling more uh, sick for, for the few days after eating that, uh, that junk. It wasn't, um, I, I'm pretty sure it should be, I had a big weight spike because I got uh, extra groceries that I didn't order and it was foods that I usually don't eat. So it was um, not something I, I kind of planned on eating and, and it, it made me sick. So I'm going to share my second screen. Um, let's just go ahead with, with the plan um, from the last video. And that is to, um, to, let's see here. Yeah, so to finish this lab that we were working on. So I've got uh, device R3 highlighted. I'm not sure if that is, um, one that I had completed or one that I was working on. So let's just look it up. Yeah, and it's really, I wish it were not like this if, if coronavirus, you know, was either never happened or was um, handled appropriately um, by our government as it has been in many other countries. Uh, this would not be um, the kind of dilemma and issue it is, but, um, Unfortunately, this is the country I live in. This is the world we live in. I really have to decide, can I go about my life the way I had planned before the coronavirus? I, I, I just, if, if I were studying for the CCE, IE, the answer would be clearly no, because there's a canceling of it, but I'm kind of in a unique situation because the, the answer is maybe, I mean, is this test a good idea? Um, the money to take the test and the travel to take the test is now coming out of my own pocket. Can I even afford to be um, spending that way um, really in a situation like this where the economy too is at, at big risk? You know, do I have to be smarter with my money? Uh, and can I, I make risks and say I'm going to spend money and um, it might pan out, it might not. Do I need to make a more surefire uh, financial decision 
such as maybe like going back to to get up i don't even have a bachelor's degree so you know look, look at all the work i'm putting in like you know two hours a day um and then ideally more on the weekends like that's probably enough to get like a wgu bachelor's degree or something like that and you know that might take me farther than than an expert level exam especially since i already have professional level exam uh certifications so it's like how how much certification do i need like i might need more like um technical writing or like uh, i'm not even sure if, i'm kind of interested enough right now so wgu unfortunately is probably out for me at this point because it's um it's not going to be um, covered by my um, <clears throat> by my employer, um, but for a while I was, I was pretty seriously thinking about it. But yeah, I I, I think um, I think just just certifications are really my best bet right now, um, and. You know, as I've said many times before, I think um, having an expert level certification in, in just anything is a really good uh, validation of my skills and abilities. So it's, it's not as important, you know, what it is in is not as important as the fact that I actually have it because it shows that I am able to work um, to a level that that is at an expert level. I need to, to demonstrate that um, in a really clear manner and I think getting this certification will do that. And I'm pretty much on my way there. Um, I've got a really good strategy, which is using that help apropos, um, getting help if I need it. Um, if I'm stuck, if I've never seen anything before, uh, I have a good plan for what to do. So I, I'm feeling pretty good about it. Um, it's it's going to be stressful. It's it's going to be difficult. And it's very likely that I'll, I'll take it and I won't pass and it will be all for nothing. But um, I think at that point, um, I'm not going to do a retake because it's not covered by an employer and I'll just uh, get different kinds of certifications. I, I think I'll get the Juniper DevOps cert, cert just because that would be pretty easy for me to get. It would be an affirmation of the things I did at my previous job. Um, and, uh, and then from there, I think I'll just do uh, books, um, Python challenges, just kind of that sort of thing. All right, so yep, I've got uh, everything. Oops, it looks like I put the wrong IP on the loopback interface, so let's fix that. Okay, now let's put the right one on there. Yeah, it's just been tough. I, I mean, in one sense, um, if the coronavirus never happened, I, I probably wouldn't be working at home the same way. So I wouldn't have as much time to devote to study. So that's kind of a, a good thing. But of course, the impact of my studying is, is totally different now too. Before really my studying, the, the strongest impact it could have is, is moving me up at my uh, company. Um, but now it's, it's really kind of a, more of an unknown what kind of impact it can have. And uh, more importantly, it's, it's, it's a big unknown what kind of impact certain kinds of studying will have before it's like, oh, well, yeah, if I get a JNCIE SP 
you know, maybe even a CCIE, you know, you know, the more I stack them up, the higher I'm going to go in the company. But now it's like, well, you know, what will this do for me? Like what kinds of jobs will I get for having these certifications? And if I choose one certification or the other, will that mean that I get one job or the other? And which jobs are the most desirable? I think the most important thing is to just keep learning, keep studying, um, because I personally, like, I think um, with everything that's going on in the world, um, the most dangerous thing you can do is, is just get uh, blindsided or, or get, get stunned by it like a deer in the headlights and just, you know, watch the news. Um, just, just kind of, you know, sit and, th and think and stress out and, and get uh, anxious. Um, I think that's the most dangerous thing you can do. Uh, you got to keep those uh, skills sharp. Um, you really got to stay fit. Um, for me, I've, I've gained a bit of weight, um, and, and that's that's going to be really dangerous because um, things are going to move very, very quickly depending on, on what happens um, and I, I really need to be prepared for um, for those changes and you know if I'm if I'm overweight if I'm depressed if I'm uh, not super sharp not educated um, that's when I'm gonna have a much more difficult scenario or a much more difficult time. I mean, my scenario, it could be however it is. Like I could have, but um, it'd be much more difficult for me to adapt. Um, I mean, the way things are in the United States, I mean, it, it could, you know, I could get the coronavirus and be one of the few that, that react to it really badly. But, um, I think just for for mentally too, like like you know, keeping myself grounded. You know, this is what I do professionally. You know, this is something. This is a part of who I am. Uh, being an expert in this sort of stuff, it it, it really is good for. Um, I think it's really good for me mentally to kind of be grounded in. Um, in activities like the self-learning, autodidactical study. Um, the more I do this, um, the better off I am. And if I just watch the news and, and that, like it's it's just it's just too hard to uh, to focus on that. Like that's another reason for for studying for this exam. There's, there's a lot of good reasons to, to go for it, I think. Now, let me be very clear and honest. There are a lot of reasons not to go for it too. Um, it's risky for, for to travel during these times. Um, it's gonna be stressful. Um, it, it, it's gonna be expensive. Um, I might not pass the exam, so it would have no actual benefit i mean that's the purpose of this channel is if i if i fail the exam i can say oh well yeah i failed it but look back at my channel and you can see all the the study i did so even though i didn't pass it and i don't have the exam you can see i do have a skill set that is approaching uh passing this exam so whatever score i get i can say yes i have a legit um you know, 75% uh, ability in this, 
And uh, <laughs> here's what that means. It means hundreds of hours of, of uh, pretty serious practice on a, um, on a home lab. Okay, so let's see, on, on a sophisticated home lab. All right, so let's see here. We've got um, the description, four to five. So now we need an address. Yeah, I kind of, that, that's the biggest thing that gets me is like, is it a good idea to work on certifications or is it a good idea to work on skill drills? Because I think having my, my Python really sharp, um, going through a book um, could benefit me a lot. Yeah, and it's it's arguable how much a test like this could benefit me. But as I constantly say, it is an expert level exam. So it's like, you know, how beneficial is it to run a marathon? How beneficial is it to do a backflip? You know, are you gonna get hired at a job for doing a backflip? Maybe not, but your uh, personal health is going to be very, very, uh, very much improved. Just being able to do a backflip, a handstand, run a, a marathon, that, that's really good for your personal health. Even though there might not be any direct benefits, your uh, pay is not going to go up, your, uh, you're not going to directly benefit from it. Um, there's going to be a lot of indirect benefits. And I think the same is going to be uh, kind of true with this exam as well. Like, I'll just, um, you know, it's just going to help me to be more, um, just, just be better in general. Of course, I have heard the opposite to that is that if you study for exams like this, and you're presented with real world scenarios, um, they're often far more simple than the solution would be for an exam like this. So some people have said, oh, my troubleshooting ability has actually gone down since I got my CCIE, because now I tend to think that the problem is this sophisticated thing when it's actually this really simple thing. <laughs> Uh, I think I think that is, and I've definitely experienced. It's called the Dunner something effect. There's there's actually a known phenomenon where the more you know about something, the less certain you are, because there's more things that you know that it could be that could be the issue. Whereas if you know less about something, there's only a handful of things you know. So those are the things you think are the issue. So you're more certain that one of those things are the issue because you've just got fewer options to choose from as to determining what the issue might be. Okay, and I think this video, unfortunately, is only going to be about an hour until six. I've got to run some errands. Um, so I'm going to need to cut it a bit short on the weekend. Um,
typically, I think I have been skipping weekend videos, but um, when I have made them, they have been marathon three hour videos typically, um, but I won't be able to do that today, unfortunately. All right, it's time for Route 5. All right, time for Route 5. Oops, so edit group, not set group. All right, it's time to move on to router six. So that means we just got three more routers to go. 
because we are counting the fence posts, but not the fences. All right. All right, we got two more routers to go, and then we'll do the wiring up. So I plan to just go until six, so I can do a second video. I just need to run to the uh, store. Um, I've got to go to a, I ordered a um, heart rate monitor, but I'm six foot two, 205 now. <laughs> I, I, I used to be 195 uh, or, or 200 usually, but ideally I would be 185 because my BMI is 189. Uh, that's the highest um, I can weigh to, to be within my BMI. So I need to be like 188 at the highest to meet that. But um, 205 is definitely way too high. But anyways, the, the reason I brought that up is because I, I purchased a heart rate monitor on Amazon, but it happened to be an extra small, <laughs> and I did not realize that until I received it. And I did not even realize that until a few moments after I received it. Uh, I was just sitting with my extra small heart rate monitor on being like, this can't be, there's something wrong about this. <laughs> because I, I like couldn't even breathe well.
I'm like, there's no way, you know, people like exercise wearing this. There's no way people, you know, run and, and, and wear this. It's like, you know, I was expecting to wear this heart rate monitor just like a lot. I, I, like I wanted to go to sleep in it too, because I was just interesting, interested in what my heart rate looked like, uh, especially in terms of uh, variability. But it's like, I don't know who would do this. Read the box. Oh, it's extra small. <laughs> it's not supposed to be like this. So I got to go to a UPS drop off point in order to return it. I've never returned anything from Amazon before. They accepted, you click on something and then you give them a reason why you want to return it. And they'll either approve or deny your return. If they approve it, then they'll give you a shipping label and uh, you don't have to pay it any money it's just your refund is going to deduct the shipping costs so you won't get a full refund you'll just get back uh everything you paid minus what it took to to ship it but uh the shipping label all that they they have um you just got to go to a ups drop-off point but i don't know how to do that because i don't know um if ups will provide me with the box if i need my own box um, I don't know if I can print out the label at the UPS, if I've got to print it out myself somehow. I don't have a printer, so I, I just don't know how to sh how to return something to Amazon. I've never done it before. And I actually tried to do it the other day, um, but the drop-off point was a, a part of a department store, or it was like a... a the Hobby Lobby or something like that. It, like they said they had a UPS drop-off point in there, but I went in there and like they were just not having a good time in there. Like the coronavirus is just it's such a mess. Like I, I like the employees are just so stressed. It's like, well, you know what? I'm just gonna go home and do this later because this is just not a environment I want to be in with like everyone so stressed out like no one's even able to help me I don't know you know where, where to go I don't know what to do so I ended up asking some of the work there but you know she was in a mask trying to do a hundred things and it's like well I'm just gonna leave so today was the day I was meant to go and uh, go back and do it oops and it looks like I got the um, the IP address wrong, so let me fix that. Yeah, so I was hoping I could just go do it today, um, but I am very rapidly running out of time. And then, of, I, of course, I got a work day tomorrow. I could do it after work, possibly, but um, there, one thing I forgot to mention with the Amazon return is you have a limited time to return it once your return is approved. I, I think you've got like a week or two weeks, so it's not like you've got to do it right away, but it, I'm the kind of guy that if I don't do it as soon as I'm able, um, I'll just forget about it and, and end up not doing it. I really have to get as much of it done as soon as possible in order to, to accomplish it at all. A lot of people can um, can just cram last minute and, and come out fine, but me, if I try to sit down and do it all last minute, uh, I just can't get it done. And I learned that the hard way, <laughs> let me tell you that.
All right, so really good news. I've only got one more router to configure before we can do the wiring up. And I've got just about a full half hour to, um, one thing I, I like to do when I run errands, um, I'm in a pretty densely uh, uh, packed together part of town. I, I basically live between uh, three shopping malls. So I like to just go walk to uh, do my errands, but that can be pretty time consuming. So I'm going to just uh, be driving, but I, I drive with the coronavirus. You know, I've been, I've been shut in my apartment since uh, March and I've driven maybe like once a month since then. I've really, I've driven like under 10 times. I definitely will say I, I I prefer to walk, but it's just a, a time consuming thing. It's just nice. It's kind of a win-win situation in some sense walking because you get exercise, you get your things done. It's just you have to sacrifice time. Like I, my favorite kind of exercise is, is the kind you don't have to think about and you just you get without exercising. But unfortunately, I haven't yet. Um, if you couldn't tell from my background, I haven't yet figured out how to apply that mentality to house cleaning. Because if I were to wash the windows and scrub the floor and all that sort of thing, I would get a lot of exercise. But I have not done that lately. Really. I think once I actually get my heart rate monitor for real, although I just requested a refund, they didn't say I wanted to exchange it or anything, but I'll be more inclined to exercise because I'll be able to see more direct benefits of it. And I'll, I'll be able to tell um, what z heart rate zone I'm in too, so I'll be able to tell how effective my exercise is. Because sometimes, sometimes it's hard to tell if you're exercising effectively or not. I don't want to just be wasting my time when I exercise. If I'm going to put the effort into doing it. I want to know that it's going to pay off. Oops, okay, time to go to group external. Okay, so let's see here. Um, oh, my mind's racing.
let me focus on on ah so let me scroll down to the um verification ah perfect so oh but before we do that we're going to need to wire it up so let's just bookmark it so i can come back to it quick and uh do the wire ups so we'll start with router one Okay, and we'll do a show in descriptions. Okay, and now we'll wire these up. So it's going to go to router two and router four. Let's start with router two. All right, so router two. Um, Okay, so it's going to be zero, yep, zero to zero. Perfect, okay, so now we've got router one to router four. Okay, so Rudder, okay, so it's going to be one to zero. Perfect. So now we're done with router one. We've got all of the links uh, up now. The admin state, of course, is up because I don't have the port shut down in my configuration. But let's check the link state. Okay, so they're both up. Let's move on to router two. So the next link goes to router three. And it's going to be uh, port one. Okay, and then router three is going to be port zero, so it's going to be one to zero. Perfect. Okay, so that's it for router two, I think. Let's check that they're both up. And they are, so let's move on to router three. Okay, so this one's going to go to router five. Okay, so one to zero. Okay, so I think router three is taken care of. Yep, we've got all the links up. Let's, let's skip uh, router five and let's go to router four instead. Just take them in order and then we'll rearrange the topology. This is something that makes more sense. Perfect. So, yep, now router five's got a, router four's got a link to router five as well as router six. Okay, so it's going to be port one, port one to one, nice and easy. Okay, so let's see how it hooks up to router six. Oops, and I tried to open the forwarding plane. Got to open the control plane. Perfect. Okay, so. Oh, it's port zero. So, yep, so it's two to zero. Perfect. Okay, so now let's move on to router five. Router five, I think, is already cabled up, but we'll check that. So I'll leave router six open because I might need to just quickly move over to it because router five is already good to go. Nope, router five actually does have one more link that needs to be pulled up and that is a link to router eight. Okay, so it's going to be port two to port zero.
All right, but at this point, router five is cabled up. Let's check, verify. Perfect, everything's up. So let's move on to router six. Okay, so router six has one link that needs to be cabled up. It is port one. Okay, so it's going to be one to zero. Perfect. Okay, so router seven. All right, one to one, perfect. All right, so that takes care of router eight as well. Don't need to look at that one specifically. Yep, so everything's up. Let's rearrange this topology so it makes a little bit more sense based on how things are wired. Okay, it's kind of an interesting wiring. I'm not sure kind of how to make it the prettiest. So I think I think having this one over here might do it. There we go. Yep, that's gonna make it look a lot better. Ah, so if I have it like this, and then this here. Perfect. Yeah, I think this is kind of what it's going to look like on the exam. Um, there might be some extra routers that, that whose job it is just to generate traffic, but I think this is the kind of topology I'll be dealing with on the exam of the routers where I'll actually go in and do the configuration. So, okay, let's do the verification steps. So we're going to be checking the BGP advertisements, verifying that the MEV value changes when the OSPF metric changes, and we're going to be testing the minimum IGP setting. So we'll start by verifying that device R1 is advertising to device R4 a BGP MEV value that reflects the IGP metric. Let's do that. Okay, so let's let's ignore here and let's let's just see if we if we see anything interesting. So I do see that the MED is different for for this route. So okay, let's pull up the um, the answer key now. The six zero one value in the MED column shows that the MED value has been updated to reflect the configured OSPF metric. Verifying that the MED value changes when the OSPF metric changes. Purpose, make sure that when you raise the OSPF metric to 700, the MED value is reflected to, is updated to reflect this change. So let's, let's ignore that action section. Let's try to do this ourselves. So we're going to increase the OSPF metric to 700. Okay, so we've got a um, metric statement here at 600. So let's increase that to 700 and see if this MED goes to 701. And then we'll check the answer key and make sure that we did it in the way the 
lab expected us to do it. So that we get full credits on the exam. Okay, so that's at 700. Let's see that the MED was changed. Oops, uh, it looks like the MED was not changed. So perhaps I missed a step. Um, perhaps it takes some time for it to update. Uh, let's take a look at the answer key and see where I went wrong. So the action is from configuration mode, set enter the set protocols OSPF area zero interface metric 700 command. Okay, so I did that. Commit after waiting 12 minutes. It's a configured delay period. Enter the Oh, oh, okay. So this, this is meant to be on, on another line. Okay, so commit. So after waiting 12 minutes, the configured delay period, enter the show route advertising command. Okay, so it's gonna take 12 minutes for it to update. That's far too long. But the meaning will be the 701 value in the MED column shows that the MED value has been updated to reflect the configured OSPF metric. Okay, so let's let's just take a look at the configuration some more. Maybe we can reset that value so it doesn't take 12 minutes, just takes like 30 seconds or a minute, something more reasonable. Ah, so it looks like this is going to be, ah, here we go. So here's, here's the update interval. Let's set that interval to something more reasonable because I, in 10 minutes, I do need to, uh, run some errands, so 12 minutes just isn't gonna work at all. Nope, oh, so ah, we gotta choose minutes. Uh, let's just go, let's try 0 0.5. Nope, okay, oh, invalid data. Let's try 0.5. Nope, okay, we can't, we can't do that. Oh, well, I did 0, 0.0 actually. Nope, okay, yeah, it's invalid. So we'll do one minute. Oh, oh, ah, it has to be 10 minutes minimum. Wow. Okay, well, um, yeah, that's not going to work because uh, I got I to gotta leave in 10 minutes. In fact, right now, I, I could use a five minute break. Um, let's see here. Um, testing the minimum. Okay, well, you know what? I, I think I'm going to pause it and, and, and come back in, in a few minutes. Uh, we might see that update by the time I get back. So I can be a little bit late to run my errands. That's okay. Um, so I'll just uh, come back and uh, hopefully we'll see that go to 700. And then I'll do the last commands and then I will end the, the video and run my errands. So I'm going to go a little bit past six, um, kind of delay my errands but we'll see this MED value change. Um, and then we'll do the rest of these steps. And then after that, um, I think that's gonna be, be good. So let's see here. Oops. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so that will be the end of, <laughs> this was meant to be for BGP communities. Um, I kind of got off of track, but um, that's all the more reason to close this out and move on. I do believe that I have a decent understanding of, of BGP communities, or at least a good understanding of how to find help. And MPLS is, is I think, going to be a huge weak point for me, probably one of my weaker subjects right now. So I definitely need to devote some time to that. So, yep, I'm gonna pause, come back, we'll see this change, I'll do these steps, and then I'll mark that complete. So I will see you in a little bit, I'm pausing the video. Okay, I'm back, and uh, I got really good news, it's at 7.01, so let's continue with the rest of the steps. So 
But yep, it's at seven one. So, okay, now it wants to decrease the OSPF metric, um, but if that takes another um, seven minutes, I'm not going to be able to do that. But let's uh, let's try decreasing it and see what happens. Okay, so we are decreasing it. Let's see if it goes down right away. Um, if it doesn't, I, I'll assume that it'll take that 10 minutes. Ah, so, so it, went, it went down right away, but for some reason, uh, Huh. Yeah, but for some reason, when I increased it, when you increase the OSPF metric, the MED value remains unchanged. But when you decrease the OSPF metric, the MED value reflects the new OSPF metric. Well, it changes, it just takes 10 minutes. When the minimum IGP statement is configured, the MED value changes only when a shorter path is available. Oh, okay, so this is, this is what happens if, um, yeah, if I have a special command uh, figured, so configured. So let's look at the, current configuration a little bit closer and we can see that oh we've got a MED IGP update interval under routing options. So so the 601 value shows that the value has been updated. Make sure that when you raise this to 700 the MED value is updated to reflect this change. So yeah, we, we verified that, um, took a full 10 minutes, but it did happen. Okay, so the next step was to test the minimum IGP setting, change the configuration to use the minimum IGP statement instead of the IGP statements. Okay, so this I didn't do yet. Um, I've got to do change the, ah, here we go. So I've got to change this, I believe. When you increase the OSPF metric, the MED value remains unchanged. But when you decrease the OSPF metric, the MED value reflects the new OSPF metric. So delete the IGP statement here, perfect and add the minimum IGP statement and increase the OSPF metric. Let's do that. Okay. So that looks good. So, oops. So, okay. So we don't need this whole metric out IGP at all. We just need metric out minimum IGP instead of IGP. Let's see what the difference is. So this is to track the IGP metric. Let's see what the difference is between that and this one. Okay, this is also to track, oh, this is to track the minimum IGP metric. Okay, so we're choosing what aspect of the IGP metric to track. Do we want to track it increasing 
and decreasing or just decreasing. So let's go with just decreasing. Okay, and then let's set the metric again. Okay, so let's do a show route advertising protocol BGP um, and see what that looks like. Okay, so it's down the 21. Um, now, I'm surprised it didn't go up. Oh, yeah, no, I'm not surprised it didn't go up because we changed it to, uh, to minimum metric. Now, if I changed it to just regular IGP without um, that delay, um, then uh, it, it would behave the way I had expected it to behave now, just to go up. So, oops, and uh, forgot my favorite keyword, relative. So let's do a delete minimum, and let's do a set IGP. Okay, so now it should um, go up to 800. Yep, so now it went directly to 800. So if I were to go to this and do a show pipe display set relative and uh, delete IGP and then set minimum IGP. And then I were to set that metric to be lower, uh, we would see that it would change down to the lower metric, but if I set it back higher, it won't because that IGP, that minimum IGP only changes it if it goes lower. Okay, so we can see it, oops. Yep, it did not go lower yet. That's because I did not change the setting. Okay, so, yep, let's change the setting. Yep, to a lower setting, to 200. Okay, now let's see that it did, in fact, drop down to 200, or sorry, to, to 21. Yep, because it adds an extra one. Okay, and now let's roll back that change, and we'll see that it doesn't go back up. Oops, uh, it's going to roll back one, not oh, roll back zero. Okay, so yep, it didn't go back up. So yeah, unfortunately, I, I kind of went off the rails <laughs> and I did a, a lab that didn't have to do with uh, BGP communities. Um, so I apologize for that. Hopefully this topic was useful, um, but um, it, now it was, it was about, uh, no, it wasn't even about routing policy, it was about routing options. So that's too bad, um, but um, okay, so I think it's gonna be the second video in the series, um, but the good news is I am now done with uh, BGP, um, I had already done it in the other series, so I wanted to move through that as quickly as I could. Uh, I'm not sure how successful I was with that. But um, the next topic is going to be MPLS, which is something I, I really sorely need um, to work on, I think. Okay, so the next topic will be MPLS configuration and troubleshooting for seamless MPLS. So don't know what they mean by that, but we'll find out in the next one. Thank you for watching.